Welcome to the Vion Podcast and another deep dive. Today, we're tackling something truly, well, mind-bending. Black holes. Some of the strangest objects out there. Our plan is simple. Unpack the most surprising, the most crucial stuff we've found so you get the key insights fast, ready. Absolutely. And it's worth remembering, you know, these aren't just math concepts anymore. They're real, and they really... Um, change how we see the universe. Right. So let's start there. The name black hole itself, it, it sounds like, well, a hole, but that's not quite right, is it? For you listening, what are they? That's a great place to start. They're definitely not empty space. Think incredibly, unbelievably dense objects. The key thing is their gravity. It's immense. So strong that once anything crosses a certain point, even light, it's trapped forever. That point being the event horizon. Exactly. The event horizon. It's not a physical surface you could, like, touch. It's more like a boundary. Mm. The ultimate point of no return. Space-time gets so warped there, all paths just lead inwards. It's amazing that the idea came way before we could ever hope to see one. Where did it originate? <laughs> Pure theory. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It started with Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity back in 1916. That laid the groundwork. But Carl Schwarzschild actually found a solution to Einstein's equations, describing this kind of object even earlier in 1915. Wow. Yeah. But the name, the catchy black hole term, that came much later. John Wheeler coined it in 1967. Okay, so if they trap light, how on earth do we find them? It seems like a paradox. How do you see the invisible? Well, that's where the cleverness comes in. Mm -hmm. We can't see the black hole itself, but we see its uh, influence, its effects on everything around it. We look for things like accretion disks. It's super hot gas and dust swirling around the black hole, mm. and it gives off intense x-rays. We can detect those. Ah, okay. We also look for gravitational lensing. Their huge gravity bends light from stars behind them, kind of like a magnifying glass. Right, distorting the view. Exactly. And more recently, we've detected gravitational waves. Actually, actual ripples in space-time. From black holes merging. Precisely. Mm. Cosmic collisions. And Cygnus X1, found way back in 64 from its x-rays, was really our first strong suspect. But then came the big one, the actual picture, 2019. Right. Absolutely historic moment. The Event Horizon Telescope collaboration. They managed to image the shadow of the supermassive black hole at the heart of galaxy M87. Which is insanely far away. 55 million light years. Yeah. It was just undeniable proof visually confirming everything we thought we knew. So we know they exist. We can sort of see them now. How do they um, How do they form in the first place? Good question. We know of two main ways. Uh, first, you have stellar mass black holes. These come from really massive stars, maybe eight, ten times bigger than our sun or even more. When they run out of fuel, they explode into supernova and the core collapses into a black hole. Okay, the death of a giant star. Right. But then there are the supermassive ones, like the one in M87 or in our own galaxy. They might form differently, perhaps from a uh, direct collapse of huge gas clouds way back in the early universe, skipping the star phase. And we have one right here in the Milky Way, Sagittarius A. We do indeed, right at the center. It's about 4 million times the mass of the sun. And only 26,000 light years away. Practically next door, cosmically speaking. Relatively speaking, yes. And we confirmed it by watching stars orbit nothing, essentially. That work actually led to the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics. Just incredible. So we had these massive invisible things all over. Do they last forever or can a black hole die? That's where Stephen Hawking's work comes in. He proposed something called Hawking radiation. It suggests black holes aren't perfectly black. They actually um, leak energy very, very slowly. They evaporate over time. But we're talking time scales longer than the age of the universe. So right? vastly longer. So yes, they probably die, but we won't be around to see it. And the universe seems to make them in all sorts of uh, varieties. Absolutely. We found one pretty close, relatively Gaia BH1, about 1,500 light years away. The biggest contender might be TON618, possibly weighing in at 66 billion solar masses. Yeah. Staggering. Billion. Billion. And the smallest known is around 3.8 times the sun's mass. Then there's GRS, 1915 plus 105, spinning over 1,000 times a second. 1,000 times. Wow. And before we finish, we have to mention spaghettification. That term is just too vivid. Huh. Yes. It's what happens if you get too close to the event horizon especially of a smaller black hole. The difference in gravity between your head and your feet would be so extreme, it would stretch you out like spaghetti. A delightfully terrifying image. It captures the extreme nature of these objects perfectly. It really does. From invisible giants to cosmic spaghetti makers, black holes just keep challenging our understanding. And you know, despite all we figured out, there's still so much we don't know about them. It really makes you think, 
What other profound secrets does the universe hold? How much more is out there waiting to be discovered? A perfect thought to end on. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the cosmic abyss. Stay tuned for more such intriguing stories and insights to come.